In the previous video, we had finished building the home page of our next JS blog. If you are here for the first time, I suggest you watch that first link to the full playlist given above. And in this video, we will set up the WordPress site, which is going to act as the backend API. In fact, this video does not contain anything related to next JS. So I could skip the WordPress part because most of you might already know how to set up WordPress. But still, I decided to include it as I want this web series to be as complete as possible. Ok, I will show you how to set up a WordPress site on a cloud VPS server and enable the GraphQL API. And our next JS frontend will then send requests to this GraphQL API to fetch the posts and pages. Regarding the VPS hosting, you can go with any VPS provider of your choice. For the purpose of this video, I am gonna use DigitalOcean. So let me show you how to install WordPress on a DigitalOcean droplet. Currently I am logged into my cloud panel. The marketplace section offers one click WordPress installation. So there is no need to set everything up manually. From the marketplace search for WordPress. Then let me select this option. The package includes WordPress, Apache web server, MySQL, PHP, certbot for SSL management, fail to ban security plugin and postfix. Click the create WordPress droplet button which takes us back to the cloud control panel. There we can set the remaining things such as the region, server size etc. Let me select the region closest to me that is Bangalore. 120.04 is already selected as the droplet operating system. Coming down there are a few recommendations. I am gonna skip all of them for now. Next we need to set the droplet type. The cheapest option available is shared CPU with regular disk type. It comes with 1 GB of RAM and costs $6 per month. Then comes the authentication method that is how you want to log in to the server from an SSH client. You can either go with the traditional password based authentication or set up an SSH key pair. I already have an SSH key added to my account. So I am selecting that. If you don't know how to set up SSH keys on a server, I suggest you check out the video linked above. Before finalizing the details, we can set up a custom host name. Next JS WP site one. Add it to a project and click create droplet. Okay, the droplet is now being created. It can take a few seconds. The new droplet is now active and here is the public IP address. Besides that, there is also a get started button. Clicking on it reveals additional information and the steps to follow in order to complete the server setup. It says we need to SSH into the server as the root user. But before that we want to point the domain name to the server's IP address. That is the domain name we want to use for our WordPress site. So I have to log into my domain's DNS management. Let me copy the IP address to the clipboard. The domain I plan to use for this project is abhinavar.com and I am managing its DNS using Cloudflare. Currently I am on my Cloudflare dashboard. In your case you might want to log into the domain registrar's dashboard. I want to install WordPress on a subdomain called wp.abhinavar.com so that I can use the root domain for the site's frontend. We can create a new DNS A record for that. The name is WP that is the subdomain part and the IPv4 address paste from clipboard. Let me disable the proxy status and click save. The new DNS record can take a couple of minutes to fully propagate. After that we can continue with the setup process. 
We are doing this in advance because installation of an SSL certificate requires the domain to be pointed to the server. By the way, we will be installing a free Let's Encrypt SSL certificate using the search bot tool from our DigitalOcean server. And it requires validating the ownership of the domain name. So pointing the domain name to the IP address proves the ownership. Ok, it has been a while. Let's continue. Open a terminal window or any other SSH client on your operating system. Copy the SSH command and paste it in the terminal. We are using key based authentication so I want to add the path to the private key file as well. Let me use the dash i option. The path is home directory slash dot ssh slash host keys slash do1 which happens to be the private key on my machine. Since it's the first time it asks whether you trust the fingerprint or not, type yes to continue. And we are connected to the server. Next, we have to follow a questionnaire to complete the WordPress setup. First, enter the domain we plan to use, that is wp.apinavar.com. Then the email address, this will be the WordPress admin user email. Also set a username and a strong password. Now it asks for the site title. Let it be WordPress test. Final confirmation answer yes. Then would you like to use let's encrypt to configure? Of course. So enter the email address. Agree to the terms and conditions. Would you be willing to share your email address? No for now. Select the names for which you want to activate HTTPS for. Enter option 1 since it's a subdomain. Ok, now it's trying to perform the domain validation challenges. Now waiting for verification. It has finished. However, it says challenge failed for domain wp.apinavar.com. Maybe because the DNS might not have propagated fully. So let's try again manually after some time. It has been a couple of minutes. Let's try running the setbot command once again manually. Which setbot says the setbot utility is installed. The command to install the certificate is sudo setbot dash dash apache. This will check the apache configuration and figures out the domain names. Which names would you like to activate HTTPS for? Again, select the first option. Performing the challenges once again and waiting for verification. Ok, looks like now it has succeeded. Please choose whether or not to redirect HTTP traffic. Yes, redirect. Congrats, your certificate and chain have been saved at the specified location. Now let's try accessing the site. Go to https wp.apinavar.com slash wp admin. Yeah, it's working. Let's enter the username and password to login. Now we are on the dashboard, but it looks like DigitalOcean installed an older version of WordPress. So we want to update that to the latest version, which happens to be version 6.1.1 as of now. Ok, updated. Let's take a look at the posts section. You can see that it's almost empty. There is only one default post. So we want to import some dummy content so that we can start designing with that. I already have some backup data containing posts, pages and images. And I have included that in the GitHub repo for this project so that you can download it and try with it. I created the backup files using the well-known updraft plus plugin. So you can use the same plugin to import and restore from the backup. What you need to do is download each of these five files, database plugins, themes, uploads and others to your computer. Then install the updraft plus plugin and upload the files. Let's go to the add new plugins page on our WordPress dashboard to install the plugin. Here it is. Install it. Then activate. Now go to the plugins settings page. You will find an option to upload the backup files under the existing backups section. 
but before that there is one thing i need to modify i want to modify the site address in the database backup file to match with our domain name otherwise it can mess up our wordpress installation this is the domain name we want to use but the domain on the backup file is probably different so let me locate the database backup file on my computer and here is the gzip compressed database file which contains the data in sql format i want to extract it and open it in a text editor i am opening it in vs code and as you can notice currently the url is set to something else example.com let's replace that with the real domain name perform a search replace for all the occurrences in your case don't forget to use your domain name okay now click the replace all button back in the folder delete the old gzip file now let's open a terminal to compress the new file in gzip format to do that we need the gzip package installed on the machine the process may be slightly different for windows operating system the command is gzip followed by the file path okay now we are ready to upload the files to wordpress select all the files and start the upload process okay the files are uploaded now check the box and click the restore button check all the components plugins themes uploads others and database then click next restore the restoration is successful return to updraft plus configuration now let's login again remember the restoration also changes the original username and password so we have to use the new details to login i think i want to fix that in the backup files given on github okay let's take a look at the posts page you can see the sample posts we can use in our next js blog it has also added some media files that is images and photographs we can use in our design we have some pages as well currently an about page a privacy policy page and a sample page let's visit the front end of the wordpress site and this is how it looks later we will disable this front end because we plan to use wordpress as our backend api only that's what a headless wordpress site is the next step is enabling the graphql api by default wordpress gives a rest api but a graphql api is easier to work with you will soon realize why once again go to the plugin section and search for wp graphql here is the plugin we are looking for currently it has over 20k active installations install and activate the plugin Now on the left side you can find a new menu item which leads to the GraphQL settings page. On this page you can find the API endpoint URL. Normally you don't need to change it to start using the API. So the endpoint URL is domain slash GraphQL. That's where we will be sending our requests. There are more things below that including the option to restrict access to authenticated users with JSON web tokens. probably i will show you that in a later video for now let's not touch any of this besides that the plugin offers a feature called graph iql ide it helps you compose graphql queries using an interface let's open the query composer suppose i want to fetch all the post titles for that i can go to posts then select nodes and then check the box towards the title and you can see the corresponding query string in the middle column 
Click this button to run the query which returns the result on the rightmost column. It contains only the data we asked, that is the title. Notice how simple the query and the data look like. Whereas a REST API would contain all the unwanted fields that we may never use in our application. So that's the number one advantage of using GraphQL over a REST API. It allows fetching only the required data. Okay, in this case, we ran the query internally from within the WordPress dashboard, but it's possible to query the API from anywhere from a remote server or even from your local machine. So next I will show you how to fetch the same data from the local machine using Postman as our HTTP client. So here is Postman which allows sending HTTP queries from local machine to anywhere including remote servers. It's available for all platforms including Linux, Windows and Mac. Let me create a new request. Set the request type to get and the request URL is our GraphQL endpoint. HTTPS domain slash GraphQL. Okay, we want to send the query string along with the request, right? So go to the body tab and select the format as GraphQL as Postman has built in support for sending GraphQL requests. Going to the WordPress dashboard, let me copy the query string to clipboard, then come back and paste it here on the left side. Now click send and we got the same result. That's how to work with the GraphQL API. Taking one more example, suppose I wanted to fetch the post dates as well. So add date to the list and click send. We got both the title and the date. We will be implementing the same thing in our next JS app. There are different ways to send GraphQL requests using JavaScript, including the Apollo client package. But in our application, we will be using the built-in fetch function to keep things simple. Okay, let me go back to the WordPress dashboard. There is one more thing I want to show you before ending this video. That is to disable the default WordPress frontend. Luckily, there is a plugin to do that without custom coding. Again, go to the Add New Plugins page and search for Headless Mode. Here is the plugin Headless Mode we want to install. Activate it. Once it's installed and activated, go to the Settings page. It says that our site is currently not redirecting, which means frontend is not disabled. To achieve that, we need to add this constant to the wp-config.php file. I am copying this piece of code. Then go to the terminal where we are already connected to the server. Then I want to find out where the site files are located. I hope it's somewhere inside the VAR directory. Change directory to VAR www.html then list directory yes this is where DigitalOcean has installed WordPress for us and here is a wpconfig.php file I want to open it in the nano editor nano wpconfig.php scrolling down and this is where we want to paste the constant definition then change the target URL to something else let's enter the login page URL save and exit go back to the headless mode settings page and try reloading the value is showing up let's visit the front end and try reloading but it's still showing up probably because we are currently logged into the site so let me try the same in an incognito window paste the url and this time the page got redirected so no one else will be able to access our default WordPress frontend. 